seven. Home Alone redefined Christmas movies, but for the people who made this mega hit, it was no holiday. He didn't want to hear my ideas. He didn't want to talk to me. This is the surprisingly painful story of one of movie history's greatest Christmas miracles. Bob Daly said, all right, well, if you could do this movie for 10, we'll make it. 10 million might sound like a lot, but compared to most movies that came out in the late 80s, $10 million was nothing. So you might be wondering how they pulled off all that stunt work, star power, Polka King of the Midwest, and pyrotechnics for only $10 million. Well, they didn't. New Trier wasn't just any old high school. That's right. The ghosts of John Hughes films past inhabited the halls, being the location for Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Uncle Buck. We walked into this gym and we were like, it's got a grid in the ceiling and it's big enough and we could build a house in here, I would think. And the next thing we knew, we built all the sets in the school. This was a beautifully built, structurally built, two floors so you could walk up steps to actually the front door we shot here. We're the wet bandits. You know, the truism is anytime you build a set with water in it, it's gonna leak. I mean, it is what it is, right? We have to have a set, we have to have it flooded. You know, where are we gonna do it? The answer was down this hall, past the canteen, through the auditorium, and in this door. The pool, the pool that has water in it now. And it's like, well, it may as well drip into an empty pool, right? So we built the set down at the shallow end. Uh, yes, that's right. correct. It was such a fun project, and there was so much enthusiasm for it that even though the budget was climbing, 11, 92, 12, 13 million to 14 million. John believed that Warner Brothers would be comfortable with whatever budget it ended up at. An eerie feeling began haunting the vacant school. John finally came and said, they're having issues with the budget. Unless we could deliver a $13.5 million budget like the next day, they were gonna pull the plug. This is Warner Brothers, aren't, aren't we close enough? I mean, it's not like we said it was 25. I hang up the phone and I had seen the production manager from Warner Brothers going to each office telling everybody the project is dead. Close up, pack up, leave, go home. And with that, Home Alone was dead. Uh, we were walking back from the commissary, and we asked him, how's it going on Home Alone? Because we'd heard about it. And John said, well, I'm actually fighting with the studios at Warner Brothers. And thus began a legally questionable exchange Who is it? between John Hughes and 20th Century Fox. Legally, another studio isn't supposed to see a piece of material until it's legally in turnaround. And that didn't exactly happen. Leave it on that doorstep and get the hell out of here. Basically, a screenplay was left somewhere so that somebody could pick it up. It was clandestinely delivered. Click, pick up the phone, dial Fox, and say, we got the call. And they said, you're now a Fox picture. A valid question was, but how much snow? Did we have enough money in the budget for snow? But the heavens provided a Christmas miracle. I remember the day kind of started to kind of rain a little bit, and then it just dumped. And our beepers started going off saying, we're moving to the McAllister house first thing in the morning, make it happen. On just their second day of shooting, they nailed one of the most important shots in the movie. The money shot, that's what it was, it was the money shot. The snow looked fantastic. It was more snow than we really needed, but we weren't gonna mess with it. But their little snowy miracle Came with a side of trimmings. We used um, potato flakes because we needed snow blowing. So within a day or two, when snow started to melt, the potato flakes started to degrade and it became like this horrible, uh, <laughs> funky vegetable smell. So, two days into shooting, it had dumped and things were turning rotten. To star alongside Pesci, they cast Daniel. 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 Dan Roebuck. Roebuck? And then we did a screen test with that actor and Joe Pesci. I don't think Joe felt like they had chemistry. They just felt a little flat. And after three days, Chris came into our office and said, guys, we have to replace Dan Roebuck. It's not working. I really need to try to get Dan Stern into this movie. 
That's a good idea. Then when we did the camera test with Joe Pesci and Dan Stern, it was magical. That bother you when I do that? Nope. You know, you could get locked up for a uh... The hardest thing for Pesci was not swearing. Don't f with me, Al. How the f give me a f day? F you with the drive through Joe said an interesting thing to me. He said, every time I get a script, if it's not a Scorsese script, he goes, the only way I can read it is if I add f every three or four words. Although it's a wholesome family film, one might excuse the odd swear word. Shoot! What? And he said, I want to make a language like a resum frickin' suck a rat. What? 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 What happened? Like a cartoon gruff guy. Everybody looked forward to the day when John Candy would be on set. Polka, polka, polka. I don't think John Candy knew it was going to be 23 hours. And there was a point where Candy looked at John and it was like, you son of a. Maybe we shouldn't talk about this. For a 23 hour day, an actor as big as John Candy must have made a fortune in overtime or something. John Candy did that as a favor for us. Sure, you know, it's Christmas time. It wasn't, you know, some big salary with scale. Yep, that's right. Dan Charles, the pizza boy, made more than John Candy on Home Alone. Cheapskate. When I did the first stair fall, no one told me how to take the fall. I just launched myself as high and far as I could. Ah! The falls in Home Alone had a huge impact on the stunt industry. Now when somebody does a fall where they get a lot of air and they fall on their back, they call it the Home Alone. But there was one other iconic moment in the film that wasn't exactly performed as written. John scripted that moment. He was supposed to do this and then pause and scream. But he did this, and then he kept his hands there just because it was such a little kid thing to do. But as a result, he created this iconic moment by putting his hands there and keeping them there.